from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. It is 5 o'clock here on your Friday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Nicole Griffin with your headlines on this May 21st. A young boy playing video games shot while sitting in his own home. This morning, the message the boy's family is sending to the person who pulled the trigger. Plus, pride flags no longer hang on the walls in Pendleton Heights classrooms. This morning, why one student says he plans to take the issue to the state house. And a local high school is opening doors for students to attend historically black colleges and universities. This morning, why students say the program is a game changer. Good morning and thanks for joining us here for Good Morning Indiana on this Friday. Yeah, we're excited to have you here, Nicole. Kind of a Friday treat for me and Todd. <laughs> we haven't seen you in a while, but we do have some good news in the forecast as well as we're getting into the weekend, Todd. Yeah, you know, as bad as this week started off with all that <laughs> rainfall on Monday when you were standing out there with the umbrella, Lauren, uh, it's ended very, very nice across the area. Yesterday was absolutely terrific and we're carrying that same weather over into your Friday forecast. There's a live look outside from downtown to the north and temperature uh, this morning are sitting in, in 60s right now, 61 in Bloomington, 67 in Indianapolis, Kokomo at 63. The winds are just very light out of the south. Uh, wind uh, very similar to yesterday, a little bit of a breeze in the afternoon, but nothing that's going to be all that gusty. Uh, so that is terrific news. A little bit of high thin cloud cover out there this morning. Once again, that'll kind of just drift away. Otherwise, rain showers off to our west. The radar has looked just like this uh, throughout much of uh, this week with the rain uh, showers moving through Missouri and Iowa and basically moving from south uh, to north. So get out there and enjoy the, the weather today. Mostly sunny skies this morning. There's some high thin clouds this afternoon, but temperatures again going all the way into the mid 80s for your afternoon highs, Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you. Let's take a look right now. Your commute over here on the west side. This is I-465 near Crawfordsville Road and I-74. You can see traffic there is already picking up at this early hour, traveling up to speed. We'll keep an eye out for any crashes or delays to slow down your Friday morning commute, Nicole. Yeah, now to a tragedy on the northeast side of Indianapolis that is becoming all too familiar in the city. To kill innocent people, a child, 12 years old. Are you serious? Family members say 12 year old Deshaun Bills is on life support after a stray bullet struck him in the head. Police say the boy was playing video games in his grandmother's living room early Thursday morning when someone fired shots on North Leland Avenue near East 34th Street. Deshaun is a seventh grader at Arlington Middle School. Family members and city leaders say the ongoing violence is unacceptable, especially as it hurts and kills innocent children. Something needs to stop with the violence or whatever. It, it, it just has to stop. And, and you you destroying not just our family, but when they find you, because they are going to find you, and it's going to destroy their family when, they, when you go to prison for the rest of your life. I'm frustrated. I'm very frustrated. Our community is frustrated. And our city is frustrated. We have seen this far too often. And the solution is within our community. We can stop this type of occurrence from happening. If you have any information about the shooting of Deshaun Bills, you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously. That number is 317-262-TIPS. It is 503 on our Friday and May is Women's Health Month and Community Fairbanks Recovery Center says they've noticed the pandemic is driving more women to drink. Melissa Cole has been in recovery for five years now and struggled with addiction for 20 years. She says making connections is a huge part of recovery. Cole says being around people at in-person meetings were halted during the pandemic. Women are oftentimes also the caregivers, so staying at home with kids, trying to navigate e-learning on top of all the other stressors can lead many women to drink. It's more socially acceptable um, is probably a big thing. Um, it can be considered classy for women. Um, I mean, we have a whole culture of wine moms you know, that you go to Target and there's the sign, um, I'm a mom, get me, you know, whatever it is. 
there's a whole culture around that. So then it, it becomes more acceptable. Cole says she denied having a problem for years, but once she got help, she turned her life around completely. Now she has a beautiful family with a two-year-old daughter who doesn't have to grow up in chaos. If you're struggling, you can call 211 to connect to resources. Today, Metro Police's newly formed Diversity and Inclusion Council will meet for the first time. The council brings together 28 officers to work through a three-year strategic action plan. The council's goal is to help better connect the department with the people they serve. Last month, the entire department underwent e-learning training on diversity. Well, Central Indiana School District facing some criticism after students say the district forced teachers to take down pride flags hanging in classrooms for years. Nearly 3,500 people signed a change.org petition asking the South Madison School Corporation to allow pride flags to be flown in Pendleton classrooms. The student who started the petition attended a school board meeting on Thursday night. While he didn't get a chance to speak, he tells WRTV he plans to take this issue all the way to the state house. We are planning to start working with some legislators to draft a bill that um, hopefully in what I would like the bill to be is to um, prohibit schools from discriminating against the flag. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully this, hopefully this creates a domino effect. Well, the board did not address this issue despite that attention. Bryce Axel Adams plans to speak at the next meeting. We're waiting to hear back from the superintendent regarding the situation and how the district plans to move forward. Nicole? In Indianapolis High School, once struggling to get students to go to college, is now boasting about their program that is not only getting students to college, but graduating them at an impressive rate. WRTV's Troy Washington is live to show us how the emphasis on historically black colleges and universities has changed the game for these graduates. Troy. Good morning. Yeah, guys, take a look. The wall behind me is covered in memorabilia from HBCUs. Today, I get to introduce you to a woman who is making sure that Pike High students get to take on every one of the schools here on this wall. We started this program in 2006 uh, with <laughs> Dr. Nathaniel Jones, who was superintendent. And we knew that we had a job to do because we didn't have a whole lot of students going to college. And since its inception. 55 HBCUs have been attended and graduated Pike students. Dr. Ruth Woods is at the helm of the mission she's been passionate about for the last four decades. Our numbers are just something to be proud of. Every student on this wall is family to Dr. Ruth Woods. I can't thank you enough for always pushing me, and I wouldn't trade my college experience for the world. Reading each letter of gratitude. This young lady just graduated three weeks ago from Jackson State. Um, she is a math major. That's what motivates her to stay at it. I just get so many of them. And even as time marches on, the students never forget Dr. Woods. For her to be thinking about me this year. I mean, how does that make you feel, though? It makes me feel like what I am doing as a community service is definitely a blessing. She says for her, finding scholarships, putting students on the path to afford education, and steering them towards success still gives her a rush. And it's not just African-American students who are benefiting. She's out to tell all students about what HBCUs can offer them. Alan Campos, he is an architect. And he went to Prairie View. And he is now the lead architect for the redesign of the Houston International Airport. He's from Pike, and he's from Prairie View. And he's Hispanic. Dr. Woods has given a lifetime to building this legacy. And when I asked her how long she plans to stay at it, she says... You better ask the man upstairs that. Uh, <laughs> Guys, I really enjoyed talking to Dr. Woods. And she says she's going to keep helping and supporting students until the Lord calls her home. Now, later on in the show, I'll show you the wall that's being put on display for the entire nation to see working for you. I'm Troy Washington.
WRTV. Well, very cool, Troy. Thank you so much. It is 5.09 this morning. 50,000 scholarships are available for working Hoosier families that face barriers to access to quality child care. The funding is from Federal Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. Families who meet income requirements and work in essential industries are eligible. That includes, but it's not limited to health care, retail, food service, and charitable organizations. The scholarships can be used towards early care and, and, and education, summer learning, or out-of-school care for kids 12 and under. Advocates say that the assistance can help families in ways beyond having child care for the day. We know that a lot of these families unfortunately don't have a lot of extra funding to pay for really high quality care and so this gives them access to that. We're also hoping that um, as families have stable environments for their children to go to through the summer that they're able to either get better employment, work more hours, save some money and help them just gain some stability as they go into the fall as well. Families with incomes of up to 250% of the federal poverty level qualify for the Build, Learn, Grow scholarship. For a family of four, that equates to an annual income of about $66,000. For more information, look for this story at WRTV.com. A survey from Bankrate.com found families expect to spend an average of $834 to $1,000 on child care this summer. That includes daycare, a sitter, summer camp, or summer classes. Bankrate says those costs go down as children get older, but they can still cost a significant amount of money, Nicole. An Indianapolis teacher fired for who he's married to is asking a judge to reconsider a lawsuit this morning. How the school he was fired from is now responding. Plus, world-class gymnasts are in the Circle City preparing for the Olympics. Just ahead this morning, how Simone Biles' stop here in Indy could help land her in the history books. It's 5:11. We'll be right back. Welcome back this morning. Police say a North Vernon man accused of stabbing a man to death had a hit list. William Stephen Billy Smith was charged with murder and arson and the death of Robert Boyd. During the investigation, Smith's ex-wife called police to turn over a hit list with the names of seven people he wanted to kill. Prosecutors say Robert Boyd was on this list. Jennings County officials say a retired police officer, a judge, and Smith, Smith's ex-wife were also on that list. At 514, a former teacher at Cathedral High School fired for being married to a man is appealing the dismissal of a lawsuit against the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. A judge dismissed Joshua Payne Elliott's lawsuit against the Archdiocese late, earlier this month. Payne Elliott's attorney says the judge offered no reason or rational for this, rationale for this dismissal. The former teacher started working at Cathedral back in August 2006 and was fired July 2019. In a statement, attorneys for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis told WRTV, quote, the Supreme Court has repeatedly affirmed the freedom of religious schools to choose educators who fully support their mission, end quote. You can read the full statement in this story. Just go to WRTV.com. Apple CEO Tim Cook will be the star witness today in an antitrust lawsuit surrounding the game Fortnite. Epic Games, the owner of the popular game, filed the lawsuit last year after Apple dropped Fortnite from its app store. Apple says Epic created its own digital payment system, which Apple does not allow. Cook's testimony on Friday is likely to set the tone for Apple's fight against the growing antitrust pressure it's facing. Now to your forecast, Todd. I got my first pool day in yesterday. Oh, it was so nice. I know you love the pool. <laughs> I know you love the pool. So yeah, you know, finally we got into the 80s. First time uh, this month that we got into the 80s. Only the second time uh, this year, but we're about to string a couple more together. And if you are heading to the pool, if it's open in your neighborhood, uh, make sure you put the sunscreen on. The May sun getting strong. UV index probably about a seven or eight here uh, this time of year. Outside right now, it's a very mild start with temperatures that are in the 60s, partly sunny this afternoon, and then into the 80s once again as we are back above normal here all across uh, the area. Temperatures right now are sitting in the 60s all across the area with the exception of Greencastle. We've dipped down to 59 degrees here this morning, 61 in Bloomington, 62 is the current temperature in Greenfield, and 67 in Tipton. As we work our way throughout the morning hours, we'll hold pretty steady the next couple hours. Once the sun comes up, we'll see our temperatures moderate very quickly across the area, and by the time we get to the noon 
hour. We'll be approaching the 80 degree mark uh, across most of central Indiana as we warm uh, very, very quickly. Some high thin cloud cover out there this morning. That is just about it. Otherwise, we will have partly cloudy skies uh, throughout the day today. And here's where your temperatures are going for highs. A very, very similar to the day yesterday. We'll be in the mid 80s across the Kokomo area. 84 Logansport, the same 87 in Lafayette, 84 and 85 degrees from Indianapolis to Martinsville. Shelbyville right around 86 degrees and then 86 as well. Columbus over towards the Seymour area. So get out there uh, and enjoy uh, this uh, nice Friday. Great way to end uh, the work week. If you have Friday evening plans, temperatures from the 80s back down into the 70s and very, very comfortable. And tomorrow as we kick off uh, uh, qualifications as they get going on your Saturday, maybe a little bit of cloud cover to start the day on Saturday, but then partly cloudy skies. Uh, temperatures in to the mid 80s and then we'll continue in this forecast in the next couple days. It's really honestly just all about uh, the temperatures because we're not expecting any precipitation in the forecast. 88 on Sunday, maybe up to 90 degrees on Monday. If we can keep the clouds away long enough and then once we get into Tuesday, that's when we're going to bring some sc uh, scattered showers and uh, thunderstorms uh, back into uh, the forecast. As you see here in your seven day planning forecast, we're in the 80s at least until Thursday of uh, next week when the temperatures dip down into the upper 70s. But all in all, a very summer like forecast here as we push towards the end of May. If you are heading to the track though for qualifications this weekend, make sure you drink plenty of water and have the sunscreen handy. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's get a check of traffic as you're heading out on the roads at this hour. I-465 near Kentucky Avenue. This is the southwest side and look at all that traffic already at this early hour. Again, part of the detour route as the north split is closed to through traffic. So keep that in mind if you're traveling on the south southwest sides. You may see more truck traffic out there this morning. Everything is still moving along up to speed, though no delays. So that is good news this morning, Nicole. This weekend, the U.S. Classic will get underway right here in Indianapolis. The meet tomorrow is the first time in 18 months Olympic gymnast champion Simone Biles will step into the spotlight. The 24-year-old is attempting to become the first woman in more than 50 years to repeat as an Olympic champion. The Texan is using the platform created by her stardom to become an advocate for change in gymnastics and beyond. Biles is one of hundreds of women abused by former USA Gymnastics team doctor Larry Nasser. The gymnast says she considers herself a voice for the voiceless. Well, the next time some IPS basketball teams take to the court, they'll have a brand new look. All of the district's high school basketball programs were given these custom new shoes. It's a partnership between Nike, Miles Turner, the Pacers, and Mountain Dew. They donated those shoes to the schools. Very cool. Well, intense moments on the track for Santino Ferrucci. This morning, how the driver says he's doing following Thursday's crash. From race car drivers to dolphins, the 500 Festival Parade has featured it all. Just ahead this morning, why the 1988 parade literally went to the animals. We'll have that story and more coming up for you just after the break. Stay with us. It is Fast Friday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 35 drivers all hoping to edge their way into the field of 33 come qualifications on Saturday. But the road to the greatest spectacle in racing becoming a little more eventful for one driver during Thursday's practice. Late in yesterday's practice, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan driver Santino Ferrucci hitting the wall in turn two. He was taken to IU Health Methodist Hospital to be checked out and was released overnight. Ferrucci posting to Twitter saying he was back in the garages at the track. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, as you can tell, back at the Speedway, all checked out from medical. Uh, go through final physical test tomorrow to see if I can get back in the car and drive. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little sore, but happy to be here. And uh, the guys are working overly hard to make sure our high V Honda's back on track and it's going to be really quick. So uh, see you guys tomorrow. Well, here's a look at Thursday's quick six leading the pack. TK Tony Kanan followed by Indy native Connor Daly. Santino Ferrucci grabbing that third place run before the crash. Joseph Newgarden, Scott Dixon and Renus VK rounding out the quick six as we head into a fast Friday. And from race cars to lions, even elephants, Nicole, all were included in the 1988 500 Festival Parade. Former WRTV reporter Jack Reinhardt explains the fanfare as we continue our countdown to the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500.
Indianapolis 1988, and a big move was underway. The Indianapolis Zoo closed at Washington Park and was in the process of moving to a new, much larger home in White River State Park with an opening set for June. The 500 Festival celebrated that milestone during the month of May with the theme Zubilee 88, saluting the Indianapolis Zoo. Grand Marshals for the parade, Garfield the Cat and creator Jim Davis. And animals dominated many floats. The 1988 Indianapolis 500 was a show of record-breaking domination by some of the most familiar figures in track history. For the first time ever, one team occupied the entire front row. Team Penske drivers Rick Mears, Danny Sullivan, and Al Unser Sr. Mears set a single lap and four lap qualifying records of just over 219 miles an hour. Team Penske drivers led 192 of the 200 laps in a race marred by crashes and mechanical problems. Mears led the final 78 laps, getting the first win for car maker Chevrolet. For Mears himself, it was the third win, making him the sixth driver to win three races. Mears also gave owner Roger Penske his seventh win at Indy. All right, thanks so much there, Jack. If you're heading out to Fast Friday at the track today, the conditions are going to be very similar to what we saw yesterday in the sense that we are going to have very warm conditions with that hazy sunshine outside right now. Uh, we are looking at temperatures in uh, the 60s right now. The highs are going into the 80s uh, as far as once things get going uh, later on this afternoon. Here's your morning forecast. Partly cloudy skies. Uh, high temperatures by the noon hour should be right around 80 degrees. And then as we transition into the afternoon, your actual high temperatures will be right around 83 to 86 degrees with just maybe some high thin cloud cover. But uh, once again, uh, if you're heading out to the track or anything across central Indiana, our bodies are just kind of getting used to these warmer temperatures. So make sure you stay hydrated out there and drink plenty of water. Todd, thank you. New fields making good on a promise to increase diversity from the top down. Coming up at 530, who is now the leading leading the board and the highly anticipated change is making history. It's 527. We'll be right back. Stay with us. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. And has it become unsafe to play a video game in your own house? It's heartbreaking. A 12-year-old boy on life support this morning after being struck by a stray bullet. Good morning, I'm Lauren Casey. Now at 5.30, his family's plea to find the shooter and to put an end to the violence in our city. And good morning to you. I'm Nicole Griffin. Pike High School is providing a path to historically black colleges and universities. Our Trey Washington has more on the program that is game changing. Todd. All right. Thank you, Nicole. As you walk out the door on this Friday morning, you're walking out to temperatures that are nice and mild for us with partly cloudy skies, uh, which is in great news as you get going. As we end the work week, what do you need to grab before you go? The sunglasses you get away with the short sleeves because we're going to warm up very, very quickly here. And of course, uh, I could put sunscreen on this map, but it would be on there throughout the entire summer. Always have the sunscreen handy uh, if you're going to be out and about in the sun for an extended period of time. A little bit of high thin cloud cover out there uh, right now, but otherwise uh, we are in pretty good shape as uh, all this rain that you see off to our west. That's exactly where it's going to stay. You see the direction that's going from uh, south uh, to north. High pressure is firmly in control here across uh, the area today. So going forward throughout the day, it's a day very similar to yesterday. Yesterday. We should be right around 80 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour. And then as we push into the afternoon, high temperatures anywhere from 83 to about 86 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Lauren. All right, Todd. Thanks. Let's take a look right now down on the south side. This is I-465, a view here near Madison Avenue, where traffic's moving along up to speed, both eastbound and westbound. Again, a little bit heavier traffic this week down on the south side as drivers are avoiding the north split closure downtown. The good news at this early hour, no crashes or delays in this area to slow you down. Nicole. This morning, 12-year-old Deshaun Bills remains in critical condition on life support after being shot while playing video games in his grandmother's living room. Police tell us the bullet came from outside the home on North Leland Drive around 3.30 yesterday morning. There was no sign of a suspect in the area when officers arrived. Investigators are urging people who may have been in this area to come forward if they think they saw or heard anything. Deshaun's family says they don't want revenge, they just want justice. I want to say this to the one that did it. 
You are going to be found. And when you do, just we forgive you because we are a Christian family. We forgive you, but we won't forget it. So far, investigators say they have very little information to go on, including whether the home was the intended target of the shooting. And so gun violence across the city has claimed the lives of three children so far this year. Back on March 13th, seven-year-old Eve Moore was one of four people shot and killed on a house on Randolph Street. That same month, 14-year-old Kayshawn Jones was shot to death near 34th Street and Forest Manor Avenue. 15-year-old faces charges for reckless homicide there. And on January 24th, a shooting on a home on Adams Street left six dead, including 13-year-old Rita Childs and the unborn child of Kira Hawkins. And there have been other instances of children being hit by stray gunfire, including two from the northeast side last year. Both of those cases remain unsolved. In May of 2020, 16-year-old Naya Mae Cope died after she was hit by a stray bullet fired into a car that she was riding in, driven by her mother. That that shooting happened near East 38th Street and North Arlington Avenue. And then in late March of last year, an eight year old Roderick Payne was eating dinner inside of his family's home at Tacoma Avenue and East 32nd Street when he was hit by bullet fired from outside of that home. There have no, been no arrests in the cases of Roderick or Naya May. But if you have any information on those shootings or the shooting that happened yesterday morning, you can call Crime Stoppers at 317 262 TIPS. Nicole. A new type of policing is helping hundreds of families in our area. IMPD's Behavioral Health Unit was formed in 2016. It is a special team designed to help those with mental or behavioral health issues. The team has officers and licensed clinicians who respond to active crisis calls and other members who follow up after. In 2017, the unit expanded to include a mobile crisis assistance team. Janet Higgs has two sons who are schizophrenic. She says finding help is not always easy, but the officers who work with her sons truly care. I heard word of mouth about the MCAT team, so I called them and, um, sorry, they were wonderful. They, um, they work really hard to get a rapport with my sons so that um, they gain their trust and they do things like they, they brought him lunch, they took him out for lunch and when they found that it was necessary to, um, that he was the, the gold standard for admission to a hospital is you're a danger to yourself or others, they would transport them to the hospital and help facilitate with getting them moved to the hospital. If you or a loved one is experiencing a mental or behavioral health issue, you can call 911 and specifically ask for a member of this team. At 535, Pike High School used to struggle when it came to getting students to go to college after graduation. Well, now they say 78% of their graduates go on to become college graduates. WRTV's Troy Washington tells us about a program that's making a lot of that success possible. Hey, Troy. Good morning, guys. Now, this is a wall that was shared with the White House initiative on HBCU. So just imagine schools all across the country are being inspired by what's going on right here in the Circle City. At Pike High School, historically black colleges offer students an option they may not have otherwise considered. I did not grow up learning about HBCUs. My mother went to a PWI, so my father. So it's not really talked about in my family because none of us went there. I learned about why I came over to Pike. Meet Isaiah Martin. He's a senior at Pike. When he says PWI, he's referring to predominantly white institutions, a term used to describe colleges that aren't mostly made up of minority students. I did my research based off my major, which a lot of people may go off like historical significance, which is cool. But I personally wanted to go somewhere where I think I would succeed the most and come out with the least amount of student debt. For Martin, choosing Norfolk State out of the dozens of HBCUs to pick from was a no brainer. He looked at affordability and which program would best guide him towards success career wise. So the plan is to major in chemistry and uh, to go to med school, hopefully at Howard University to become a psychiatrist. And the reason I major in chemistry instead of pre-med because, you know, life does go different ways. So if something were to happen, I still have a major in chemistry, which I can do more with than having a pre-med major. But for each student, the story is different. Anaya Smith says HBCU started to pique her interest early at Pike. 
HBCUs were not the first thing on my list because I didn't really have any, many people in my family go to HBCUs. And that's when she found the perfect fit. I will be attending the illustrious Howard University, majoring in music therapy with a vocal concentration. She says she's starting a legacy in her family since many of her relatives hadn't considered HBCUs since there aren't any in the state of Indiana. But she's changing that. They know in-state schools, but they don't think too much about out of state or HBCUs is something that's praised, but it's not something that's mentioned. I actually have my god sister. She's actually, she's a freshman in high school right now. She's looking into Howard as well. Now here is why the school chooses to focus on those HBCUs. They say there are a lot of scholarships out there and that's crucial when it comes to those first generation students. They look at the experience, the affordability and the tradition of attending an HBCU. And as you can see, something is clearly working. Working for you, I'm Troy Washington, WRTV. Great story, Troy. Thank you so much. Well, mark your calendars on Friday, June 18th. Dozens of farmers, artisans, and other Indiana-based businesses will be on Monument Circle. The monumental marketplace will feature locally grown food, drinks, homemade goods, and food trucks. The grassroots organization Indiana Grown says it is partnering with Downtown Indy Inc. to make this year's event bigger and better than ever while adhering to COVID safety guidelines. The monumental marketplace goes from 10 to 2 on June 18th. Todd. All right, as you walk out the door here this morning, you're walking out to very comfortable conditions. Temperatures are in the 60s. The sky is starting to brighten there. As you look from IMS towards downtown Indianapolis, 67 at IND, Kokomo at 63, Bloomington at the airport there just to the west of uh, downtown. The temperature sits at 61 degrees. If you're teeing it up here throughout the course of the day today, uh, you are in great shape. I hit the golf course yesterday. It's almost going to be a carbon copy of uh, yesterday with temperatures as we approach the noon hour in the upper 70s, a low 80s as we get into the 4 o'clock hour. Our high today should be right around 85 degrees uh, in between uh, noon and uh, 4 p.m. And then as we go forward in this forecast, we are going to keep the temperature pretty similar for Saturday. But then once we get to Sunday and Monday, we even crank it up a notch as high temperatures get close to 90 degrees. Either way, a very big and a prolonged push of very warm air. Our normal high this time of year is 75. So as chilly as it was earlier in the month, we're flipping the switch here uh, to more of a summer-like pattern, at least for the next seven days. Todd, thank you. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a ceasefire, ending 11 days of deadly violence. Straight ahead, what's next for the region? And major headaches for downtown residents less than one week into the North Split closure, the concerns they're voicing, and the response from DPW. It's 540. We'll be right back. It's 544, less than a week down, 18 months to go. Downtown Indy residents are worried increased traffic from this north split closure will become a safety hazard while drivers continue to adjust to the changes. Drivers are getting off the interstate, going through residential areas downtown that see a lot of people biking and walking. One area is the Ransom Place neighborhood where the cultural trail crosses a busy intersection. The north split closure has made that even busier. Sylvia Zhang tells WRTV that she doesn't feel safe anymore walking with her twin daughters and she hopes the Department of Public Works addresses the issue soon. We need to let people know that it's not a highway. We need signage that says this is an urban area where you need to expect there to be vulnerable road users. The Department of Public Works tells us that it will take a few weeks before traffic patterns emerge as a result of the closure, and that's when DPW traffic engineering team can address the high traffic areas. We are staying on top of the very latest on this project. As it continues, everything you need to know, including those detours, the maps of the closure, just go to WRTV.com for everything you need to know. Overnight, a major breakthrough in the ongoing violence between Israel and Hamas. Both sides agreeing to a ceasefire after 11 days of unrest in the region. President Biden's Biden speaking out on America's efforts in the negotiations. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest now from Washington. Overnight, Palestinian families in Gaza seen celebrating, igniting fireworks over the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The region seeing 11 days of fighting, resulting in at least 260 Palestinians killed in the West Bank and Gaza, with over 3,300 wounded, 12 Israelis killed, and about 350 wounded. This morning, over 70,000 Palestinians left homeless. 
The decision, following days of intense international pressure, including Egyptian mediation efforts, and especially from President Biden, who on a fourth call in a week with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, called for significant de-escalation. I believe the Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely and to enjoy equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and democracy. My administration will continue our quiet, relentless diplomacy toward that end. Before the agreement, Israeli strikes shaking Gaza where they continue to bury their dead. Like this 11-year-old Palestinian girl, Dima Asala, her little body carried in on that litter. Her mother, experiencing a pain no parent can imagine, saying she was killed in an Israeli airstrike while getting food from a friend. Meanwhile, Hamas also pounding Israel with rockets. ABC's Matt Gutman was there. Well, you can see the Iron Dome right behind us over there. You can see it right there. Those were the rockets that were coming in. On this side, oh, families' oh, lives are also altered forever. Gonna... Like this wow. woman in a shelter, her son remaining in their Israeli home when a Gaza rocket destroyed their house. He made it out okay. He said, Mom, I'm fine. Calm down. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Secretary of State Antony Blinken is scheduled to travel to the Middle East in the coming days to meet with Israeli, Palestinian, and other regional leaders. Aika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. At 547, a new law aimed at combating the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes was signed by President Joe Biden on Thursday. The COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act will create a new position at the Justice Department to expedite in the review of potential pandemic-related hate crimes and incidents reported at the federal, state, or local levels. It calls for the government to work with community-based organizations to raise awareness of hate crimes during the pandemic. It will also require the Attorney General to establish a way to report the crimes online. Reported Hate crimes against Asians in 16 of the nation's largest cities and counties are up 164% since this time just last year. That's according to a recent study. And the House of Representatives has passed a $1.9 billion spending bill to beef up security at the Capitol in response to the deadly January 6th insurrection. The vote comes one day after the House passed legislation to establish an independent commission to investigate the attack. Progressives almost blocked the bill in a last minute effort because they did not support the funding in the bill that go to police. Among the budget items allocated in the bill are $250 million for capital ground security, like fencing and sensors, and $162 million to fortify doors and windows at the Capitol and House and Senate buildings. The loved ones, COVID victims, want to make sure that their family members are not forgotten. Marked by COVID activists are calling for a memorial on the National Mall. They're also working to establish permanent federal COVID-19 Memorial Day on the first Monday of March. Activists want states to receive funding to add their own memorials as well. FEMA recently started reimbursing COVID funeral expenses, but activists believe that it would also help the victims to have a compensation fund similar to what 9-11 victims received. This pandemic is a huge event in our history that we want to properly capture and pass on to future generations, not only the science, but the lived experience. Nearly 50 U.S. House members are co-sponsoring a resolution to make these requests a reality. At 549, want to check in with Todd on today's forecast. Looks like the sun is already coming up a little bit there, Todd. Yeah, here it's starting to brighten the skies. Lauren, as you look off uh, towards the east past downtown Indianapolis, a little bit of high thin cloud cover that's out there. Very, very similar to what we have seen um, for the past really two mornings uh, where we start off with that high thin cloud cover. The sun gets higher above the horizon and we burn it off uh, very, very quickly. We sit at 67 degrees in Indy. The temperature actually came up uh, since uh, last hour when we were at 66, just a light wind at the southeast at seven miles per hour. And all across the area, temperatures are in the 60s for the most part, 159 out there in uh, Greencastle, 69 in Muncie, 66. The current temperature now as you work your way from Tipton then eventually up into the Peru area. It's fast Friday at the track, uh, cranking up the speed here. Uh, should be another great afternoon if you want to head out there uh, to watch uh, the cars. Temperatures will be.
in uh, the mid 80s throughout the afternoon hours with partly cloudy skies. And then as we work our way into the evening hours, start to wrap things up. Uh, temperatures will cool back off in uh, to the 70s and it should be a very, very pleasant evening for us uh, across uh, the area. A little bit of high thin cloud cover out there. That is just about it. Otherwise, the closest rain showers well off to our west. They will not make any eastward progression uh, towards our area. They are going from south to north. A very similar track to what we've seen uh, the, the past two days as this overall weather pattern has not changed whatsoever. And that leaves us now on the warm side of things. Highs today will be topping off anywhere from about 84 to 86 degrees across the area. Maybe a little bit warmer here off to the west in the Lafayette area. Uh, but all in all, a great day this evening. Temperatures will be in the 80s, falling into the 70s. The humidity uh, is not very high today. You'll notice it maybe a little bit, but with the lower humidity around, once the temperatures start to uh, cool off and the sun starts to set, it'll be very, very pleasant. If you're thinking about maybe hanging out in the patio or grilling out with the family, sunset later on this evening is at 8.59. Overnight tonight, it's mainly clear. It's mild. The temperature's down in into the 60s. And then as we look ahead to qualifications uh, for the, uh, this weekend, on Saturday, 87 degrees with partly cloudy skies. And then for poll day, on a Sunday, we're up to 88 degrees with mostly sunny skies. Not out of the question on Sunday uh, that we could approach uh, that 90 degree mark. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on for you. I don't think we're expecting widespread uh, 90s across the area, but there will be the potential, I think, of a few of them across uh, the area. A little bit of cloud cover tomorrow morning as you start. We'll burn that off, and then we're in pretty good shape going forward in this forecast throughout Saturday and then into Sunday, as we mentioned. And even Monday, our high temperature will be approaching the 90 degree mark in the afternoon hours. The change comes Tuesday and Wednesday as we start to bring some scattered thunderstorms into the forecast. And by Thursday, we're looking at temperatures cooling off just a little bit, but still above normal at 78 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you. Let's take it down here to the south side. This is our in-dot traffic camera at I-65 and County Line Road near the Greenwood area. You can see traffic there is moving along smoothly. Don't forget, as you're traveling northbound on I-65, you do have to get off by Washington Street due to the north split closure. It is 5.52. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You could be headed to the International Space Station next year. The Discovery Channel is casting for a new show, Who Wants to Be an Astronaut? The contestants will compete for a seat on the first fully private human mission to the ISS. The rocket is set to launch in 2022, and you do not have to be a rocket scientist to apply. Producers are looking for regular people who want to share their journey to space with the world. Applicants do have to be at least 18 years old, live in the U.S., fluent in English, and in good health. You can apply on the site space.castingcrane.com. I don't know, Todd. I feel like I'd be too scared for that. You know, I, I love to travel, and I'm always <laughs> up for adventure, as you all know, but I don't, I don't know about that one. I mean, I think there's other things I'd rather do. I mean, sure, it'd be really, really cool, but... I think I get bored really, really quick. and <laughs> Get me back down to earth. All right, outside right now, temperatures are in uh, the 60s. It's a nice mild start for us, and radar is uh, nice and quiet all across uh, the area. And that's the way it's going to be throughout the entire day. There's no threat of any rainfall, partly cloudy skies. We're back into the 80s once again. In fact, today's a little bit warmer than yesterday as we get up to 85 degrees. So get out there and enjoy. Today is basically a carbon copy of yesterday, the exception about 2 to 3 degrees warmer for your afternoon high temperatures. Plenty more on your weather forecast and your latest news headlines coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues at 6 a.m. Stay with us and we'll see you then.